Preparing your database is of critical importance. The better job you do structuring your database, the more IronSpeed Designer can do for you. In particular, IronSpeed Designer will generate a more expansive suite of web pages. The pages it generates will be more sophisticated master detail or parent-child pages. In fact, every page that IronSpeed Designer generates either is or can be a master detail parent-child page. You'll find it's a lot easier to extend your application because you won't have to be spending time reworking pages as you've normalized your database. And it'll be a lot easier to maintain the data in your database because you won't have to be moving the data from one table to another as you reorganize. Step one is to create child tables to express the one-to-many relationships in your data. IronSpeed Designer uses these child table relationships to generate the master detail or parent-child pages. Let me give you an example. Suppose we want to build an order entry system. And in that order entry system, of course, we have the concept of a customer. And because you can have many customers, you'll have a table to hold those customers. And so there'll be as many customers in that table as you have customers. Now, each customer can place one or more orders. So you'd want to place your orders in a separate orders table. And then there's a mapping between the customers and the orders table, a one-to-many mapping. Next, each individual order itself is comprised of one or more line item details, the individual components that you're ordering. And so you want to put those order details in their own table. And there'll be a one-to-many relationship between the order table and the order details table. So there's an example of a parent-child-grandchild relationship. One customer, many orders. One order, many line item details. DBAs refer to this as normalizing your database. Step two is to create separate lookup tables. IronSpeed Designer automatically joins to these lookup tables and uses them to create, for example, drop-down lists on data entry pages. And on display pages, will display the text version of your lookup entry value rather than the ID value. Again, let me give you an example. Suppose in our order entry system, we have our orders table. Now, there'll be a field in that orders table to indicate the shipper that was used. Now, that could be a simple text field, in which case people will just type in whatever shipper they were used. However, over time, you'll get different entries to express the same shipper. For example, FedEx, FX, Federal Express, and so forth. Instead, it's better to create a separate lookup table with just a few entries, one for DHL, one for FedEx, one for UPS, and so forth. IronSpeed Designer automatically joins the orders table to the shippers table and will create the drop-down list for data entry or will display the company name, in this case, instead of the ID value on a display page. So it'll say shipped via FedEx as opposed to shipped via 3. Step three is to create database views for complex queries, such as multi-table joins, nested queries, disjunctive queries with ors, nots, things like that. IronSpeed Designer does have a very simple query wizard that allows you to add certain conjunctive where clauses and clauses. But for any real complexity, you'll want to use a database view. That's the best way to do it. Moreover, since that view is created in your database, you can reuse that view from one application to the other instead of recreating it each time you build a new application in IronSpeed Designer. An example of a database view might be the current quarter sales. At each quarter boundary, when it rolls into the new quarter, there's a built-in where clause or filter, if you will, in that database view that filters based on today's date and shows you only the current quarter sales. Or maybe you have a view that shows you the paid invoices, which is filtering or has a where clause filtering on a status field showing you only paid invoices. Now remember, IronSpeed Designer is not a query construction tool. So use the right tool for the job. It's best to use a tool like Microsoft Enterprise Manager for SQL Server or Toad for Oracle and so forth to create database views in your database. Step four is to make those database views updatable if possible. If a view or table is updatable, then IronSpeed Designer detects this and it generates a broader suite of pages that allow you to add and edit the underlying records. If the view is not updatable, then IronSpeed Designer detects this and won't generate those pages because you can't push the data 
that you might edit back through the view and into the underlying tables anyway. Now this is something that you must do in your database. There's no facility in Ironspeed Designer that allows you to declare your view as updatable. At the end of the day, Ironspeed Designer will never alter or change your database schema. That can only be done in your database. Step five is to declare primary keys in your database. Ironspeed Designer uses primary keys to generate certain types of pages, such as a show record or edit record and edit table page, all of which require an individual record to be selected and fetched by unique ID or by name. Because if it can't do this, if it can't generate the code for this, and your database won't support it because there's no primary key there, then it's not possible to do any editing or to show an individual record. You can only fetch them in aggregate. Going back to our order entry system, an example of this is the order ID field in the orders table or the shipper ID field in the shipper table. Now in some cases, you may not be permitted to add a primary key to a database view. So you may, in your database view, have a field that you know is unique and is effectively functioning as a primary key, but it's just not declared as such in the database, and for whatever reason, you're not permitted to declare that in the database. In this case, you can use a facility in Ironspeed Designer called a virtual primary key. A virtual primary key simply instructs Ironspeed Designer to treat a field as if it is a primary key. It'll generate the appropriate code and such. Now, if the underlying field really isn't a primary key, you're going to get some strange results. So the onus is upon you to make sure that the field really can be used as a primary key. But if it can be, you can instruct Ironspeed Designer to use it as such by creating a virtual primary key. Now, you create a virtual primary key either in the application wizard's key step or in the database's pull-down menu. The app wizard's key step is the best place to do it because it creates the virtual primary key before you create your web pages in the application wizard. This lets the application wizard create the more broad set of pages that might take advantage of that virtual primary key. Similarly, you should declare foreign keys in your database. It's actually the foreign key relationship between two tables that expresses the one-to-many relationship. And it's actually the foreign key relationship Ironspeed Designer uses to generate the master detail or parent-child pages. So again, going back to our order entry system, you need that foreign key relationship between the customer table and the orders table, and between the orders table and the line item detail table. Now again, like primary keys, you may be using a database view that doesn't have foreign key relationships between certain fields and, say, the underlying tables or related tables. You know they are implicitly there, but they're just not declared expressly as such in the database. And again, for whatever reason, your DBA won't let you modify the database to add those foreign key relationships. In that case, like a primary key, you can declare a virtual foreign key in Ironspeed Designer. And just like a virtual primary key, the virtual foreign key does not modify your database. You're simply instructing Ironspeed Designer to treat a pair of fields between two tables as if they are a foreign key relationship, even though they're not expressly declared as such in your database. And the best place to declare these virtual foreign keys, again, is in the application wizard, because it defines them before the application wizard creates pages that might take advantage of those virtual foreign